All right, we're going to learn uh, 3D printing, making your first object based upon silhouette. Okay, so first thing you got to do is go to Google, type in silhouette, go to images, and you page through here until you find a cool silhouette. Here's what you're not looking for. You're looking for something that with not fine lines, and you're looking for an all black item. Uh, for instance, this one would not work because it has white lines going through it and the fine lines in the branch would not work. The dragon would work. The horns would be a little bit complex, but it would still function as long as it was big. Easy ones would be this star or this uh, seahorse or this Pikachu. The butterfly, the antenna would get a little thin, but still doable if it was big. As you can see, the rose has white in it, so therefore the disconnection of lines here would not make a good 3D print. So those are kind of some of the rules, and those are only the rules that I'm laying down, and that's only based on personal experience. Okay, so I could go through here all day long and get hypnotized by all these iconic shapes. And uh, then that would be forever. So I'm going to go with nature because that's always a good way to go if you're just like... And I saw this cool butterfly up here. The real answer is you, it doesn't matter which one you pick as long as you're following the rules. So the antenna here are really thin, but maybe I can fix that. All right, so what I'm going to do here is first get the picture as big as I can. It looks like this one is going to be the biggest I can get, and I'm going to save the image as, and I'll save that onto my desktop. Next, I can open this in Inkscape or Illustrator, it doesn't really matter. For the purpose of the entertainment, I'll use Illustrator. Any program that allows you to trace a silhouette into vector lines. Bring Illustrator over here in this window. So I'm going to go File, New. Vector doesn't really rely on a size, so the size of the document is arbitrary. I'm just going to hit OK to that. And paste it in here. Oop. Place it in here. And I downloaded that onto my desktop. There it is. So the first thing I need to do is turn this into vector in lines instead of raster. And it's raster right now made of pixels. So I go here, trace image. As you can see, trace image automatically kind of filtered out those really fine lines that I was worried about to begin with. And when I expand it, is now made of vector points and lines okay so first thing we do is kinda clean it up just a little bit um, object ungroup and let's do that one more time until you see it it has the inability to ungroup any further Okay, and what you did now is you can click on the white and delete it because the white is a color and if you have it 100 percent correctly done you can go in here and say show transparency grid 
So now it should look like this. I can also delete these little things out. And maybe it does need antenna. Okay, I, I can totally get that. What we can do there is go like this. Uh, let's use a tool. Yeah, I'm thinking of a good one in here in the Illustrator. Probably the blob tool. Oh, but the spiral tool might be good too. Wait, let's see. Let's draw one of these out. Okay, there's a spiral. Nice. And then over here, we have strokes and we have brushes. So let's do a brush based on the stroke. Okay, kind of fat. Let's use this one. Ooh, better. And now I can make it thicker if I wanted to. That right there I messed around with it enough. I can also go like this. So zooming in using Alt and Wheel Mouse, I can grab the white arrow and I can grab individual points and I can manipulate those. So you see this fine line that's located right here? That might not fly. And the center shape, not so pleasing to look at. All right, now that I have that, I'm just gonna go like this and go Control C, Control V. Duplicate it, and then Object Transform Reflect. And I'll reflect it into the vertical axis. And I can wind it up just like that. So those are thicker lines, and now I got my design back. So in order for these to become lines, those also have to be expanded. And now these are two separate things. I got the antenna and I got the butterfly. So I can click on one, hold shift and click on the other one, and use Pathfinder to join these two together. Okay, again, this one, then this one, and join. So now we have a whole three, a whole 2D shape that's pretty solid. And if you ever wanted to do something with this, let's say you wanted to make a necklace out of it or something like that, you could also go into the ellipse tool. And maybe you want to make the ellipse over here. And I could put this here and duplicate it. And I can highlight that one, hold shift and highlight this one, and you subtract. And now I can cut perfect round holes there. If you can't see things, um, you can go to outline mode. And outline allows you to you know, kind of see it without all the black. Now the bad thing about doing that is you can highlight the objects, but any time that you're using this, it won't work. So you have to go back to preview, and then you have to find the minus black. 
So it's a combination of either this one or this one that gets that to work right. Not bad. If anything lacks uniformity, let's say this is a little thick, this one needs to be moved over. Again, go to outline mode. You can grab things and you can just use your arrow tool on your keyboard to move it around. Okay, so that's how to get the 2D shape and there's some tips using Illustrator. So now let's turn your 2D shape into a 3D shape. So please move on.